I'm going to take you to Dick Cheney, fasten your seatbelt, and this is going to absolutely blow you away. I would like you, if, you're, if you can do this on your computer, to go to methodicaldeception.com. And when you open that up on the navigation bar, you'll see where it says resources. And you'll want to click on that resources. And then um, there's a big box that says about the Israeli art students at the World Trade Center. Click here. Click on that and tell me when you get to that page that has some photographs because this is the elephant in the room that nobody wanted to talk about. And this is one of the documents, a 60, 61 page DEA document that I went over and over and over and connected Israeli Mossad bomb experts to an art group that were traveling around the United States and to an art group that gave themselves the name of gelatin. So are you there? I'm there. Uh, so you got those pictures? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to take you to Dick Cheney. Just listen up. You're looking at those pictures. Those are some Israeli art students that came from a foreign country, and their art project was called B Thing. They called their team the Gelatin group and just so you understand this gelatin is often referred to a uh, gelignite or blasting gelatin it's also referred to as blasting jelly but gelatin and they later later on changed their name because they people started waking up to this so they named their name their name gelatin they called their art projects the B thing and you will see on the left hand side a photograph of the title page of their book and what the B thing was there was a, a group called the Lower Manhattan Cultural Center that was renting the 91st floor or allowed to live on the 91st floor. These foreign art students and some of them were connected to a group of traveling art students that were all over the country that the DEA found out about because they were going door to door to some of their agents' homes and their offices. And some of the offices were not public locations. So they were like, who are these people? There's Israeli students trying to sell us art. This was just a smokescreen. So you wouldn't go to where we're about to go. Now the guy in the pink shirt, he's on the top right hand side. Yep kind of a pink shirt on, he has repelling gear on. Yeah. They removed a window. This was their art project. They put a wooden balcony out and they had photographs taken via a helicopter that was rented by their sponsor from the Lower Manhattan Cultural Center. And that particular gentleman also had a big party to celebrate this event. And he rented part of the top floors of the Millennium Hotel, you'll remember that from 9-11, and who was there, the Bush uh, relative, and uh, took pictures and had a big uh, champagne party watching this, okay? Look behind the gentleman in the pink shirt. You're going to see two big bold numbers. It says BB-18. Those are fuse holders. Now look at all three pictures and look at how many boxes of plastic fuse holders that can be used for remote control demolition and ask yourself why would art students from Israel and Austria be having thousands of fuse holders this building was built in the early 1970s they weren't electricians they weren't redoing all of the electricity in that building you know think about this okay so I get this book out, I'm waiting for my shipment of books to show up, and I literally had a voice say to me, look into this. Those fuses, by the way, come from a company called Lytel Fuse, L-I-T-T-E-L, -T -T -E Fuse Company. They're located in Chicago. And some little voice said to me, take a look into this Lytel Fuse Company, where all of those fuse holders behind those artists are. And now some of those artists are guaranteed Mossad bomb experts and that's in the DEA document that you can read so I find out that Lytel company is a subsidiary of a corporation called Tracor T-R-A-C-O-R now Tracor they went bankrupt and split their company they were a government contractor they split them off into Tracor Aviation Lytel Fuse and Tracor Defense Holdings they're based in Austin, Texas. 
They were bought out by Westmark Systems. Bobby Ray Inman was the chairman of the Westmark at a point. Then Westmark kind of started losing it, and Tracor bought them back. Tracor bought out a company called Vitro, which used to be the Kellex Company. Let me tell you about Kellex Company. The Kellex Corporation was whole, a wholly owned subsidiary of M. W. Kellogg, as in cereal, you know that guy, Kellogg, company. Kellex was formed in 1942 that the so Kellogg's operation relating to the Manhattan Project could be kept separate and secret. Kell meaning Kellogg and X meaning secret. The new company's goal was to design a facility for the production of enrichment, enriched uranium through a gaseous diffusion technique. In gaseous diffusion, isotopes of uranium-235 could be separated from uranium-238 by turning uranium metal into uranium hexafluoride gas and straining it through a barrier material. Now, this is kind of interesting, too, so for those of you who remember that originally uh, the first responders were getting calls that there was a missile launched from the Woolworth building. The newly formed Kellex Company's original headquarters were in the Woolworth building in Lower Manhattan. I know, it's just another coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> they later on moved to Oak Ridge, Tennessee. But now, the Kellex Company, you will know them today. Here we are, fasten your seatbelts as Halliburton. Dick Cheney's old company. There you go. I told you I was going to take you to Dick Cheney. <laughs> <laughs> 